As a Russian, what do you miss the most after the Western sanctions? Visa slash MasterCard. I cannot pay for Coursera, Italki, Pluralsight, Airbnb, etc. I cannot pass exams and get some professional certificates because certification centers are temporarily stopped working. At work, we have issues with IntelliJ licenses, Slack, AWS. Our government invents measures that should keep IT people from relocation, but these measures are ridiculous smile. I don't miss the clothes and food that go from the Russian market, IT is really not a big problem. The problem is technologies and brain drain. I think it's too early for most people to see the consequences of sanctions. But its apparent consequences will be brutal. Answered by Ekaterina. IIT is probably too early to tell since the situation is developing. Personally, I can say I miss much in terms of goods or services, IIT is more like opportunities I used to have even if I rarely use them. Besides, some of the authorities did a marvelous job at mitigating the immediate impact on our lifestyle, which is even more impressive considering the war was just as big a surprise for those responsible for the economy as it was for the average Ivan. I miss the sense of stability and being in control of your own life, more or less. 2014 was shocking, but things still happened relatively far away from where I was concerned, so it was easy to ignore after a while, I can't say I'm proud of doing so, by the way, but telling who was doing what and for which reasons was even harder for me back then than it is in this mess. They are still equally far away geographically, but my country is officially and actively involved this time. I don't know if my friends or myself are going to be drafted, or WWE wreath next to be invaded, or someone's going to nuke us, or we are going to nuke somebody, or something else equally bad happens. Nobody can do anything to end this madness. We don't have any obvious meaningful way to influence our government in this regard, and even if we had, it is not just our government that needs to be influenced, and I don't mean Ukraine. So, in terms of money and goods? IIT is obvious, but manageable for now. In terms of psychological damage? IIT is not good. Answered by Alex. Steam. I can put any money on my Steam wallet now. As if it wasn't hard enough with anti-Crimean sanctions and Russian anti-money laundering schemes. I guess IIT is time for my pirate hat. Answered by Oleg. I did think about it seriously. I think it did affect me that much. I will only point out a few things. Prices for dental services have significantly increased, especially orthodontics, implants, and prosthetics. This was the most painful for me. But this is influenced by the exchange rate in the first place. Russia is, in some aspects, very dependent on imports. I'm also frustrated that I can no longer order the vitamins I'm used to they stopped deliveries due to logistical problems. Prices for imported equipment also increased markedly, and supply on the market decreased. I had to buy a laptop already at a higher price. Prices for sewing equipment have also risen markedly. Russia does not produce it. I love sewing and, unfortunately, I am not yet ready to purchase it at new prices. Also now reduced opportunities in terms of tourism. I was interested in some places in Europe that I did not have time to visit. On the other hand, tourism opportunities have declined not only for Russians. The coronavirus has affected many countries. Answered by Christy. Peace of mind. Can't really does anything while the guy in charge threatens to destroy the world. Or impose war mobilization. War mode economics, most people don't know what it is. The sanity of people around. Quite a several people act like berserkers. IIT scary. Others ignore things or create a false reality of customers denial e don't need anything. What we need is made locally a lot of local products are derivatives or made on western production lines. My dad misses meds that are only western made. Still, a month's reserve is left in tree appear on the market. Several vital products for the job are missing. Technology-wise local source is in the early 90s. No substitutes exist. Chinese resellers are cheating. Chinese analogs refuse to work in Russia. Answered by GoFish. Only books. As a scholar, I bought many books on Amazon and A-Books. Now I have to wait until the pirates put them in public. 
answered by Anonymous. I only became a Russian citizen recently, and for me, the worst thing about the conflict is, in fact, the guilt because I've visited Ukraine quite a lot. First, however, I'll answer your question about Western sanctions specifically. My biggest personal issue with the sanctions is that my Sonos soundbar won't play music from my YouTube premium account anymore. It was cheap here, too, a family account cost only 299 rubles, which is about 4 bucks per month. I have Kaspersky's VPN installed on my router and would usually pay for YouTube in India, via VPN, because it's cheap, but my Visa cards don't work, and my Mir card only works in Russia. I don't know if Union Pay would work, but since they're Chinese and YouTube isn't available in China, probably not. So I've gone from my 50,000 ruble Sonos soundbar to an 8,000 ruble Samsung soundbar which I bought 7 or so years ago, I have it hooked up to my Irby's intelligent Alyssa Yandex speaker. Alyssa is a bit cheeky than Google. She's like bad Janet in the good place, which dovetails with Moscow being like the bad place these days. I am seriously considering running to Georgia to open a bank account, as one of my friends has done. Against all odds, Carl's Jr. has opened at Pavletskaya Plaza, and in March, no less. I don't miss McDonald's, well, at least not as much as I miss Wendy's, which pulled out of Russia years ago, along with Chili's. I miss Obi because they were conveniently located at the Mega at Bailey Adacha, I miss Ikea because it was the best place to buy fitted sheets. Leroy Merlin is still here, but the one in Kiev got hit in an airstrike, maybe it's karma? Price inflation has been a more significant issue, some places like Marks and Spencer haven't pulled out, but they've doubled prices due to ruble volatility. You don't get a good deal buying rubles due to the government's financial tricks, but you don't get a good deal buying dollars either, the spread to the dollar is 5 to 8 times what it was before. One thing that I am anxiously watching is mortgage rates. I was lucky to finance my apartment purchase at about 8.8%, which was considered a reasonable rate here, and I had hoped to take advantage of a government program for parents to reduce it to 6% after 6 months. Unfortunately, the banks got hit pretty hard, and I am lucky to pay 8.8%. Surprisingly, competitively priced apartments in central Moscow have retained their value, even in real dollar terms. I don't trust the government's ability to keep the currency from collapsing for the entire duration of the loan, 25 years, I wish I'd paid a smaller down payment. Paying off a mortgage during a currency implosion is like dating a hot war widow, it's like, okay, everything went to shit, but I win. Suppose we set aside the, former, yacht owners with, newly confiscated, villas in Spain. Generally, Russian demographics can be split between people who vacation domestically, typically on the Black Sea coast, and own domestic cars and those who vacation abroad, typically in southern Turkey or Europe, and own foreign or foreign branded cars. It's mostly the latter category, the wealthier of the two class strata, affected by the Western sanctions. They will fret about car parts being obtained through dodgy connections in the Caucasus, Schengen visas being unavailable, and Zara and Ikea being closed. The poor are most afraid of total military mobilization, the reserves being called up and conscripts sent to Ukraine. Because of Russia's poor economy in the 1990s and early 2000s, many families only had one child. As a result, the number of children born in 1999 was about half what it had been only a decade beforehand. Answered by Travis As a Russian, what do you miss the most after the Western sanctions? Am I supposed to miss something? Is there some class of goods that can magically be only made in those Western countries trying to do this sanctions tantrum? Russia manufactures pretty much everything locally. Either that or it is made in China as pretty much most goods nowadays are. Well, I guess some specific Western brands can only be bought from those brands themselves, by definition, but even then, nothing stops me from ordering something from a store in China again. It's often even cheaper because of their bulk orders, and many people have been buying Western stuff from Ali for years already. Answered by the Russian bear. Most of all, I miss my confidence in being surrounded by adequate people who would be against starting aggressive wars and being responsible for supporting war crimes. I miss not being seen as a part of a nation hostile towards every other part of the world apart from third world dictatorships. I miss my Ukrainian friends who can't forgive my whole nation for waking up to the sound of rockets. Miss, 
the employer that almost hired me but then rightfully considered that hiring a Russian would be toxic for the work environment. Miss, my previous employer, had to cut expenses and terminate half of the company because it was integrated in the international supply chain and had partners worldwide. I miss not feeling a hostage in my own house. Answered by Nick. None of the sanctions bother me as much as those poor innocent people and children killed every day. And I miss the freedom of speech and human rights a lot more than Levi's jeans or Apple Pay. Minor inconvenience. Answered by Tanya. Peace. I know there was no peace after 2014 between Russia and Ukraine, and I know it was not the Western sanctions that took it away. But there were hope and 30 years of hard work in building a new country, but then one terrible decision took it all away. One day turned everything upside down, killed all hope for a better future, and shuttered all pride for being Russian. Russia has thrown itself back to decades ago. Russia, as we know it today, has forever lost its chance to become a modern European country that values freedom and peace. That will become one of the darkest points in modern Russian history. Answered by Alexei. I've lost my everyday life from the first day of this horrible war. I can't do my daily job, realizing the Russian army kills hundreds of civilians in Ukraine. Society split in two in Russia, those who understand Putin as a war criminal and those who support him, z idiots. Mainly I miss the feeling of being able to work and travel around the world and say my own opinion without fear of being jailed. Unfortunately, we all are guilty of letting it happen, answered by Max. Well, nothing particular so far, though prices are even higher now, they have constantly been rising for years. I struggle to keep my thoughts straight, carry out my everyday duties, and so on. Stress takes its toll, and it's hard to care for sneakers or detergent while you know what happens. I feel mildly irritated that I have more petty problems on my list now. Instead of taking care of my job and other essential things, I have to concentrate on survival. It seems to always come to this. You end up wasting your life on shit. I'm concerned about my child's clothes, footwear, and other necessities, but I guess I'll manage somehow when the time comes, though not without irritation. Instead of sanctions, I'm much more afraid of what our state has in store for us. I indeed don't have Google Pay or Spotify anymore. I'm not going to switch to local services, which are all so glad to have new customers. Fuck them unless necessary, like when my bank ceases to exist, and my visa stops working. I remember 2014 when prices doubled after they took freaking Crimea and sanctions began. That was so damn infuriating. Our lives crippled for some distant piece of land no one cared for, except for the bunch of oldsters. Nothing helped to stop this senility from snowballing. Answered by Olga. Razor Blades Mach 3. I am back in St. Petersburg, eight months already. As a result of sanctions, Gillette razor blades jumped in price by three, and now six blades cost 1,600 rubles, or about $23. For the local salaries, this is too pricey. So I will have to find a domestic alternative. A sharp axe? perhaps? A sushi knife? Answered by Igor. Inability to pay in stores using Apple Pay. I have to get used to the cards again. I'm thinking of going back to Android. Merpay and Spurpay work there. Answered by Alex.